As Christina said, I'm Scott Dwyer. I'm from um, TAFE, Regency TAFE in Adelaide. Um, my major role there is I'm a lecturer, uh, predominantly for the Cordon Bleu, but I'm also doing some project work uh, for TAFE SA as well. And I was asked to uh, become involved in this trial um, with mobile video assessment. Um, and our project partner is uh, Bright Cookie, Leo, you can see over there. We'll talk um, more about the technical side of things. I'm going to talk about the trial outcomes from uh, my perspective as an educator and um, what the stu basically what the students and also my colleagues thought about this uh, mobile uh, video assessment. All right, so the aim of the trial was to get um, six student groups involved um, mm -hmm. to use this mobile um, app and basically compare their experience using this app to traditional assessment methods. That was, the, that was what we did wanted as an outcome. So in total, um, I had 47 students involved in the trial, uh, and again, they, they were to assess the suitability of the app. To identify if they, if, it, if they thought it provided a better quality learning experience, and if there were any barriers to completing their assessment. And we had some really interesting results from this because um, they took us a bit by surprise because all of my students that I teach are basically millennial generation, and I just assumed that they would embrace this technology and be totally at one with it, but they weren't. Um, so I did, had to do a little bit of digging around to find out what the um, resistance was. I'll tell you a bit more about that at the end. Um, so the app that they were using, um, the, the point of difference with it is that it's got uh, an introduction screen, which hopefully down the track will become an overlay screen, which Leo once again will uh, talk a bit more about that a lecturer can use to send instructions or any marking criteria or any messages or information to the student before they actually get involved in making the, um, the video. When it's complete, the student can send this video direct to a Moodle site where the lecturer can then get into the, the, um, the site, mark it, give feedback and send it straight, or have it there sitting there for the student to get into and find out what their results are. So adding for a simple and seamless process, that's exactly what we're, um, we're looking at and looking for. When I started the, uh, the trial, very early on in the trial, we identified um, quite a major problem. That was that the videos would not upload to Moodle, which is obviously a bit of a problem, um, if they were any longer than around a minute, uh, which frustrated the students somewhat, um, because they needed at least 10 minutes um, worth of recording time to actually be able to do any sort of assessment that we set for them. So, uh, as I say, it wasn't an ideal outcome so early on in the trial. However, we went on to try and fix this problem. And we found um, an app, another app called Video Slimmer, which we loaded onto the devices they were using to try and overcome the problem. It did to a point, um, and it allowed us to, or allows us to upload videos that are about five minutes in length maximum. Uh, but still, once you've done that, once you've slimmed it down, once you send it up to Moodle, it still, I feel, it still takes too long and the students tend to get a bit impatient and sort of abandon it because it's taking more than a couple of minutes to actually upload to Moodle. So um, that's an ongoing problem. Uh, the other side of it um, was my colleagues. The more they could see me doing stuff with this, um, this trial, they become more and more interested. And it was very evident that everybody around me was very keen to have this app working um, well, because it was something that everybody said they could actually use. Um, the current process that we are all using for video assessment is not very efficient, and I tend to end up at the moment, I've got 30 something students um, with a video assessment due in the next couple of weeks, and I tend to get them you know, USB sticks and they send me files that I can't open, and it gets very, very messy. Um, and this, working properly, this would fix all of that because it's a seamless process. Uh, instead of ending up all these things on your desk and then having to contact students because what you've got doesn't work, when you've marked it, then you've got to get it back to them. Um, and if they bring new devices in, then you've got to make sure that they're logged so that it's recorded that they've been dropped in and all this sort of stuff. So um, with all of that in mind, the app is actually something we really, really do need, um, especially from our side, the lecturer side as well. The students... I think this is on my next slide, actually. Uh, the students, um, the feedback was that they felt also that 
um, it's something they could rely on. So once it was set up to Moodle, they knew that that assessment was in. Instead of leaving a USB stick with an administrator or somebody or leaving it on your desk, there was that uncertainty. So this way it was actually done. They could see it there, it was logged, it was ready for you to mark, and then they knew exactly where to go to get their results. Out of the 47 students, um, 34 definitely would use the app. They thought it was a great idea. 12 would definitely not use the app and one may use the app. We had um, some interesting um, feedback. Out of the 34 students, a lot of those didn't like being in front of the camera. And I thought that was really quite incredible, being the generation they are. But they don't, they're not confident in front of the camera. Um, they're very confident behind the camera. So if they're driving it, they're happy. If they're actually in front of it doing something themselves, uh, they're not. And a lot of them said they don't like seeing themselves, they don't like hearing themselves. So that to me was something, it was a bit of an eye-opener for me, especially with the millennial generation who I thought were really comfortable and confident with all this sort of stuff. Uh, it made me think, as an educator, okay, they're happy using the technology, they want the technology to work properly, <coughs> number one, because they are impatient. Um, and secondly, it made me think, that we've got to continue looking at the needs, individual needs of assessments and students because not, you know, we can't assume that everybody's going to feel comfortable doing a particular type of assessment, especially when we start talking about technology like this. So there's a couple of things that came out of it which were interesting, as I said, for an edu educator. Um, having said all of that, the outcome I thought was pretty good that we've got the majority of the, um, the trial group are saying yes, they would like to use it. Uh, and Basically, 100% of the lecturers I work with said yes, they would like to use it. What we've got to do is find a way that the compression of it can be um, worked in such a way that it can be maybe within the app and then it can be something that will go straight into Moodle in a timely manner. So um, I'll let Leo now take over and just talk about the technical side of it. Um, yeah, as Scott said, a little bit uh, on the technical side, I don't want to go too deep into the technical side of things, I'm not sure about the audience here, but just to give you a brief. Uh, um, overview on what the app um, uh, needs to function and also uh, some of the technical problems that we found and, and possible answers for it. Um, the app consists of two, comp oh, sorry, the, the assessment tool assistant, uh, two components. One is a, a Moodle assessment plugin, so it's just a standard assessment type in Moodle, um, like you have uh, at the moment the uh, online text or you have the uh, um, assignment function to upload documents. You now have the ability to upload uh, mobile videos as another assignment type. Um, the assignment, uh, the, the assignment plugin is available via Git repository. The links are all there. Um, if you have seen at the beginning of the slides, there's also a link to the actual slides. So anybody that wants to uh, download the slides should be available. And uh, I'm not sure if you can make them available afterwards. Um, and the second component is obviously the app itself, the mobile app. At the moment, it's um, available for Google Android via the uh, Google Play Store. Um, that uh, link up there is a workable link into the, um, into the um, Google App Store and via the iTunes App Store as well. So um, they are the two working versions. They are, they are ready for download now. Uh, there is um, some interest of possibly making that available for Windows Phone once uh, people are actually using it. So far we haven't actually had many students using it. There's a few lecturers uh, that we found use, uh, using Windows Phone at this stage. Uh, it's been released uh, um, already, as I said, and uh, we, are, we are hoping to work on a, um, a future release at some stage that fixing some of the outcomes that, um, or some of the problems that uh, Scott was mentioning. Now, just the workflow here, unfortunately, it's a, a lot of information f fitting into that screen. Um, the green bits are on the Moodle side of things. So a teacher it, uh, adds a new assessment in Moodle of the type mobile assessment, mobile video assessment, and adds the assessment criteria. Now, that assessment criteria is then displayed in the app to the student, which is what uh, Scott mentioned before. So uh, that can be some tips to the students in terms of what they actually should, answer, should be answering and what uh, is required of them uh, in the video. Uh, we are hoping in future to make this uh, a multi-step process and make that an overlay so that while they're filming, um, multiple tips could be popping up. Uh, but uh, at this stage, it's an introduction before they start uh, to uh, record, they have to step through and read through the, uh, the um, requirements. 
Um, like um, Scott said, the major problems that we were having are due to size. Unfortunately, most of the devices these days and uh, uh, the devices that TAFSA were using for their um, trial were uh, mainly iPads and iPhones. Unfortunately, the iPad um, can only record in HD quality video. You can't even change the frame rate or anything. So uh, a minute video is actually 250 megabyte upwards. So uh, unfortunately, um, a lot of the bandwidth um, within the TAFE Institute and uh, also on the other end, uh, slowness has caused a lot of problems. Um, in terms of formats, all the other issues are, are uh, related to general video um, issues, so probably won't go into that today. Rather than the last one, I mean, uh, one thing that we're not going to be able to fix is uh, the bandwidth issue. Uh, so we're hoping that at some stage we actually get an MVN that somebody can plug in, uh, at least in South Australia at the moment. It's a uh, va vapor way. I'm not sure how Victoria is faring on that front. Probably not much different. Uh, yeah. um, what, what we're thinking with a demo, but unfortunately, uh, um, we are not, we're not uh, able to show the uh, tablet on the screen at the moment. What I just uh, will do quickly is give you an idea of the mobile app as it stands. Now that might not be very, very good visibly, but I'm happy to be out there afterwards and uh, you can all download the app. The trial URL, uh, you can set yourself up an account there and we, uh, um, you can actually have a play yourself or if you have a, a, a Moodle site yourself, you can download the plugin and install it on your, on your Moodle site. But this is basically the first screen that uh, gives the students all of their assessments, so it's not based on one assessment, multiple teachers um, or, or uh, lecturers could actually uh, use the mobile uh, plugin and all of the ones that are current for that student will be shown. They can choose the course that they are uh, interested in. It will give them any assignments that they have already uh, uh, used. And the red ones are the ones that are already submitted. The uh, grey ones are the ones that are submittable. They can then uh, click on submit the assignment and then actually either use a video that they recorded uh, previously into the uh, gallery, video gallery, and uh, or they can uh, record it live. What we are recommending as an outcome of, of uh, the trials is obviously at this stage that they record them with the standard video functionality and then pump them through a, uh, a video compression tool. As Scott mentioned, that's probably the thing that we would love to do as soon as possible after this. Uh, and actually integrate the uh, video compression into a, the plugin itself. So students can record the video and the app itself will do the compression uh, upwards. Now the compression apps that we're using are um, uh, compressing down to about 10% of the actual size without uh, losing a lot of quality for web delivery. Obviously they're not going to be HD quality videos anymore and, uh, and you're not going to burn them on, on a Blu-ray disc but uh, I don't think the intention ever was to do that. So, um, um, but hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to um, then integrate that process into the app itself. And uh, that's just, I left a couple of uh, um, useful tools in there and the rest is just the contact details.